Welcome to Beer and Iron's Cantina Jack Chicken cooked in a Camp Cast Iron Dutch Oven. We're going to create a pot of chicken breast rolls on a bed of vegetables seasoned with Beer and Iron's taco seasoning and coated with cheesy heavenliness. This is a crowd pleaser for sure and there's going to be some leftovers. Let's get started. A list of all the equipment you'll need is in the description. We'll start at home by tenderizing and packing our chicken for camp. You'll need to tenderize this chicken prior to cooking this recipe. It doesn't matter if you're at home or in camp, we'll need to prepare the chicken to roll up like jelly rolls. I'm going to prepare my chicken at home and pack it into camp. Even if you're going to be out for a day or three, pre-preparing this chicken at home and then packing it with you is the way to go. You're going to need six boneless and skinless chicken breasts. I usually prepare eight of them. Not all chicken breasts are created equal. Sometimes you're able to get one more into that pot, and sometimes you'll have a mishap with one falling in the ash or even in the dirt. Pack just a few more than you'll need. If you need more of a detailed explanation on how we tenderize and prepare chicken breasts, follow the link in the description. Here's the nitty gritty. Start with a needle tenderizer. This will prepare the meat for the tenderizing mallet. Work the meat from thin to thick. Then, with the meat tenderizing mallet, reduce the chicken breast meat down to a much thinner size. And for the thicker pieces, we'll almost have to create ground chicken. Almost. We need the chicken breast to remain in one piece. I have eight pieces and I'm going to brine the bunch. This brine is a mixture of salt, beer, sage, and a bit of liquid smoke. The basic beer brine recipe will work great and it's pretty easy. I brine the chicken in a larger zipper bag. This is to ensure that the chicken is in contact with the brine and we'll reuse that zipper bag to tote that chicken into camp. My brine recipe is very simple. To every 12 ounces of beer, add one tablespoon of salt. You can add other things in there if you like. Tenderize the breast meat and then brine for only one hour. We've tenderized that meat and have created more of a surface area for that brine to be absorbed into that chicken. After the chicken has been in the brine for one hour, remove the chicken from the bag. Place the chicken on a paper towel or either use a drying rack to lay the chicken out on. Pat the chicken with another paper towel to soak up the excess brine. After you've emptied the brine from the zipper bag, place a few paper towels in the zipper bag almost like the pad in the packaging from the grocery store or butcher. Arrange the chicken breast meat in the bag in a pattern that will be easy to retrieve that chicken when we're ready to season and prepare the chicken in camp. Perfect. Now refrigerate or keep this chicken in the ice chest until you're ready to cook. Now let's get out into the great big wide world. Organize all of your ingredients. Two 14 and a half ounce cans of fire roasted diced tomatoes. Two two and a quarter ounce cans of sliced ripe olives, two seven ounce cans of fire roasted diced green chilies. I prefer mild chilies. If you can't find fire roasted, just get the regular diced chilies, two 11 ounce cans of Mexican style corn, two 15 ounce cans of black beans, one eight tablespoon stick of butter. You're gonna need one to two ounces of beer and irons taco seasoning. You can use store-bought taco seasoning as well. The link to the recipe for Beer and Irons taco seasoning is in the description. And grab 16 ounces or a bit more of pepper jack cheese. You could use Colby Jack cheese if you like that better. Or you can combine the two like we're going to do in a bit. And the corn flakes. Don't worry about those name brand goodies. You'll just pay more. Don't get the frosted ones either. Just plain old fashioned corn flakes. You don't have to bring the whole box like I did to show y'all. Just fill a gallon size zipper bag about half full or more. We're going to crush those corn flakes and that bag is going to work great for that. You're going to need some toothpicks to secure your chicken rolls with. Bring three toothpicks for each chicken breast. And of course our tenderized beer brine chicken breast. There's eight in there. We'll need six to eight whole skinless boneless chicken breast. Lastly, we're going to use some pepper rings to garnish our dish. They call these red Fresno chili peppers. They're a bit spicy, but not too bad. We brought extra beer to put out any fires that light up in our mouth. 
We also will be slicing up some of these jalapeno peppers too. These peppers will add the spice to our dish. It'll also add some color. Our taco seasoning is mild, as are the canned green chilies. This way, the option to remove the spicy afterwards is up to the person enjoying their meal. We need to prepare our vegetables. Let's get the fire going while we work. I use my small 8-inch cast iron Dutch oven to melt my butter. You can use whatever you have, even a cast iron skillet or other container that can be warmed up. Set this butter pot aside. We need to melt our butter, but not up to a cooking temperature. We just need to melt it. Set up your bowl and your strainer. Dump the fire roasted tomatoes, black beans, sliced ripe olives. I add those olives here. The liquid in those olives is thin and it helps to wash things off. We'll need to rinse things off a bit, in other words. Add the diced green chilies. Then the Mexican style corn. Like the olives, the liquid in the can of corn helps wash things off. And that colander is full, full, full. Just do the best you can stirring things about. We want to give this time to drain. We don't want too much moisture in the pot when we're cooking. Things will boil. And what we want is to bake. We want to come back to our vegetables later after we've pre-cooked our chicken some of the way. If you're enjoying this video recipe thus far, consider giving us a thumbs up hitting that subscribe button, and give us a little ding on that dinner bell. Cover your mixed vegetables. Those little flying gnats are bad tonight. Our starter briquettes are ready. I'm going to add the main real wood briquettes to the batch, and they'll be ready by the time we prepare and pot our chicken. I'm going to be using a deep 12-inch Camp Cast Iron Dutch Oven. This Cabela's pot is kind of like Camp Chef's versions. That little notch is one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. You'll find them on Camp Cast Iron Dutch Ovens like Camp Chef makes. You will not find them on Lodge Ovens, that I know of anyways, but I still love Lodge. That little notch allows for a wired thermometer to be inserted into that oven. I'll show you in a bit. Grab your pepper jack cheese, your knife, and your cutting board. Now cut the cheese. Cut it in long chunks. We're going to wrap these chunks up into our chicken when we roll it up. Put the cut cheese in a bowl and keep it nearby. We need that butter. If you haven't already, set the butter over and near some heat to start melting it. Grab the zipper bag of corn flakes and start crushing them. Don't go as far as to create cornmeal. We need the flakes to be crushed into small pieces so we can coat the chicken with the flakes. Your hands work fine. A rolling pin works better. A cast iron skillet or other pot bottom would work too. Dump the crushed corn flakes out and into a container large enough to roll the rolled up chicken into and to gather up the corn flakes. I'm using a 10 inch cast iron Dutch oven for my container. I'll use it again later to hold my hot cooking chicken while I add my vegetables later in the cook. We're about to create an assembly line of sorts. Check on the butter. It's doing great. Let it melt until it's almost melted. Kind of like a bar of soap that's too small to use anymore. There's our butter pot. Do you see how the butter is almost melted? That thin piece there will finish melting soon, but this way we know that it's not so hot that we can't put our fingers in it. And our fingers in that butter, they will go. I guarantee. Our corn flakes are in there. There's our taco seasoning. This larger pot is the Dutch oven we're going to cook our meal in. Lay one chicken breast out with the bone side up. They are boneless, but leave the side that was near the bone up. Rub in some taco seasoning on this side of the chicken, kind of like a dry rub. Then add a couple of blocks of that pepper jack cheese. Roll the chicken in a jelly roll fashion. Have three toothpicks nearby. I suggest three and only three in each chicken roll. This way you know how many toothpicks are in each chicken roll. Ah, there's the cornflakes. Roll the chicken roll in the butter and then roll it in the cornflakes to coat the chicken. Go back to the cutting board. Then secure the roll with three toothpicks. Now add that chicken to the cast iron Dutch oven. Expect your fingers to get battered. No worry. 
Enjoy the mess, we're outside. I'm gonna show you this process again, but up close. It's not hard the second time you do this. Lay out the chicken breast. Rub a bit of taco seasoning into the inside surface of the chicken breast. Lay a couple of chunks of pepper jack cheese on the end of that seasoned chicken breast. Then jelly roll that dude up. Roll the chicken breast in the butter. And then roll it around in the cornflakes. Back to the cutting board. Now secure the chicken roll with the three toothpicks. Then add the corn flaked pepper jack filled chicken roll into that Dutch oven you'll be cooking in. Just keep seasoning, cheesing, rolling, buttering, corn flaking, toothpick securing, and adding the chicken to the camp cast iron Dutch oven until you have no more room in that Dutch oven for any more chicken rolls. You'll be able to get about six to eight in there. We'll add a bit of crushed cornflakes on the top of our chicken in that camp cast iron Dutch oven. There's going to be a lot of cheesy fat that will run, and those cornflakes will soak up some of that oil. We'll wipe some of that out if we need to. Keep watching. Add a bit of taco seasoning over all the chicken breasts. A temperature probe is optional, but it makes life so much easier. We're going to let our chicken cook to up to about 125 degrees Fahrenheit to 145 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 50 degrees Celsius to 63 degrees Celsius. Remember, we're going to add more ingredients and let the chicken continue cooking. We'll eventually get it to 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 75 degrees Celsius. Set the probe, guide the wire through the notch, and make sure the wire's not pinched and moves in and out freely. We're going to bake our chicken at about 350 degrees or 176 degrees Celsius. In a 12-inch camp cast iron Dutch oven, we need 24 briquettes. 12 times 2 is 24. Divide 24 by 3. You'll get 8. Place 8 under the Dutch oven. Then place the rest, 16, on the top. It's not windy tonight but I'm still gonna use my windscreen. Watch that temperature probe wire. Over the windscreen is better than under. The windscreen will hold my heat and sort of block my thermometer from the heat of the briquettes. Back to the preparation area. Flip the cutting board over. I wouldn't prepare foods on that cutting board if I were planning on eating them raw, but I need that other cleaner surface for shredding the cheese. Use a bit of parchment paper for this. Just wad the paper up and then open it back up. It'll make it easier to handle. You show that parchment paper who's boss. Take whatever pepper jack cheese you have left and shred it up. You could use pre-shredded cheese, but that sawdust coated pre-shredded cheese just doesn't melt as well as fresh shredded cheese. I'm gonna add a bit of Colby Jack cheese to mine to add a little bit more color and more cheese. Now it's time for a beer. We have our cheese shredded and waiting. Our vegetables have been mixed and are draining. We'll let our chicken get up to about 125 degrees Fahrenheit to 145 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius to 63 degrees Celsius. And then we'll finish this thing all up. Fall is upon us. I do love the colors. Looking back at some of my past fall photography has got me motivated to get out and do some more photography. But for now, this beer and this moment. Once the chicken has reached a bit at or above 125 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius, go ahead and remove the lid to the Camp Cast Iron Dutch Oven. Leave the hot briquettes right there on the top of that lid. Pull the temperature probe. Careful, that dude's hot. Pull that pot from the fire. Don't change anything with that fire. We'll be back. Oh man, look at all that melted cheese. Pull out all three of the toothpicks from each chicken roll. Make sure each toothpick is accounted for. By the way, if you make it to camp and forget your toothpicks, just a few tree limb tips will work great in a pinch. Remember that 10 inch camp cast iron Dutch oven with all the crushed cornflakes, right? Use a pair of tongs to remove each piece of chicken, but just for a moment.
how much cheese and cheese fat is left. If you feel you have too much, wipe out some of that goopy stuff. It may be goopy, but it's delicious. Remember, we'll be topping this with more cheese in a bit. Over the remaining cheese and soggy cornflakes in the pot, pour over the vegetable mixture and mix it all in very well. Season the top of the mixture with a bit of taco seasoning if you like. Then return the chicken to the Camp Cast Iron Dutch Oven and over the bed of vegetables. Remember the shredded cheese. Pull all that goodness out and top the chicken with that shredded cheese. I'm going to top this all with a few rounds I'm going to cut from these two peppers. One red Fresno chili pepper and a jalapeno pepper. Cut more or don't even add them. It's up to you. Just add them here and there and add them everywhere. There. That's pretty. Almost like Christmas morning. Back to the fire. Secure that temperature probe into the chicken. If it tells you it's already at 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 75 degrees Celsius, it's lying to you. Find a new piece of chicken to stick that probe in. Return the lid to the pot. Do you need more briquettes? If so, get a new batch to the fire. Do you see that pot there with that lid stand? Hang on, I'm gonna show you in a bit. I've got some goodness in that pot too. The chicken temperature will take longer to reach now. We've just cooled down that pot with those vegetables, and the vegetables need to come up to temperature too. The chicken needs to reach 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 75 degrees Celsius. Okay, ready? You didn't see that coming, did you? I'll have a recipe in the secret for these in-camp rolls very soon. Speaking of very soon, if you're enjoying this video, feel free to give us a thumbs up. Hit that little subscribe button and don't forget to hit that little dinner bell. Once the chicken has reached 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 75 degrees Celsius, it's time to eat. Let's take a peek. Oh my goodness gracious. We're living in high cotton now, I tell you what. There's that hot cast iron fajita skillet there. Watch that dude sizzle. Now get that chicken on there. Then some of those vegetables. Land sakes alive. That's almost too fancy for me. And with a roll. And beer. Well there. Now I'm in my place in society. I've got some gnats stuck to my beer glass. Now I'm humbled. I'm going to use a knife here to cut. But I promise you, that chicken will cut with a fork easy, easy, easy. I'm going to sit here for a spell and enjoy my food, finish my beer, and enjoy the going-ons here in this beautiful state park with a few of the end-of-season campers out here around me. My name is Sule, and I love to share the magic that comes from my black pots and pans. Y'all keep on cooking in those black beauties and enjoying those frosted glasses of that fermented barley pop. We'll see you next time here on BeerAndIron.com.